Welcome back, everyone, and good morning. My name is Valérie Tess. And I'm Dave Keating. Welcome to day two of the 2021 European Development Days. We hope you enjoyed yesterday's sessions and had a replenishing evening. Although, Dave, I think and suspect that many of the EDD participants stayed up late and browsed through all the sections of the platform, the global village, the networking area and the social media corner. True, we do have an audience from all kinds of different time zones. Uh, now, if you missed out on any of yesterday's program, no need to despair. All session recordings will be available on demand and there's more to come today. Absolutely. Day two is dedicated to, to protecting biodiversity and people. We have eight topics to go. Four in the morning, our Brussels morning, of course, and four in the afternoon. On top of that, there will be three special events, more level high, high level speakers and more debates and an A-list closing ceremony that will bring the event to a momentum. There's a lot to look forward to. Thankfully, we have thematic moderators who are journalists and experts working on biodiversity. From each of their own channels, they will help us navigate through today's program. Let's ask each one of them what's on the agenda for their topic today. Let's start with Studio 2, where we have Philip van den Abiel, an engineer, writer and moderator working in the offshore industry. Philip, can you tell us, how can we protect seascapes and coastal areas? Well, Dave, I am eager and keen to explain that to our audience today. Now, I appreciate we have four concurrent sessions this morning, but seascapes and coastal areas is the one you cannot miss out on. I mean, seascapes form an integral and essential part of our planet's ecosystem. Our climate, our weather is regulated by the sea. We land much of our food and even the oxygen in the very air we breathe from coastal areas, from marine environments. So we need to protect, we need to foster those seascapes and coastal areas and embrace them as a global resource to secure and to forge our sustainable future. And that means ending marine pollution, putting a stop to overfishing, uh, and also trying to reverse the trend of declining marine ecosystems. It also means supporting the local communities in adapting to climate change, in becoming more resilient to global warming, uh, to rises in sea level and to changes in ocean acidity. We need to reach out to the rural youth because they need to become the biggest ambassadors for seascapes and coastal areas. So we have a lot on our plate, which is why we've designed a densely packed and most interesting program for this session. I do not intend to read the agenda out loud, but just to give you some flavor of what we have up, up our sleeves for this morning, uh, we're gonna talk about nature-based solutions for sustainable development which basically means inviting modern nature in the boardrooms where investment decisions are taken. We're going to take a closer look at mangrove trees, explore their merits but also their limits and see whether we, we can strike a better balance between mitigating climate change but also protecting the interests of the local communities. And we're going to uh, also share some best practices on how to empower local youth, the rural youth, in uh, taking the lead in protecting biodiversity. In addition to that, I have a couple of interviews scheduled on, for instance, financing schemes to invest in green and sustainable innovation, on the importance of a science policy interface in ocean governance, and also so on how to protect the coastal and marine habitats in the Kirimbas National Park in Mozambique. Having said all of that, Dave, I think it is helpful that the other sessions will be recorded and made available for replay so that everyone can tune in to channel number two and join us for a session on seascapes and coastal areas. What a pitch to remember. Thank you, Philip. Let's move to Shada Islam, an independent analyst and commentator. Shada, indigenous people are on the first line when it comes to protecting biodiversity. Uh, what will we hear on your channel? 
Hi, Valerie and Dave. Oh, I, I'm so excited. In Channel 3, we're going to be talking about indigenous peoples and local communities, their challenges, their work, and their resilience, their aspirations. You know, I work on questions of diversity and inclusion, so I'm really, really excited and really passionate about the question we're discussing today, really for three reasons. First, it's a great topic. Indigenous peoples and local communities are the unsung heroes of our times and of our world. They are the custodians of our lands, our forests, lakes and rivers, savannas and deserts. And they're pivotal, critical for our combat against climate change and for the preservation of biodiversity. We don't often hear about them, their lives or their achievements. So we're going to change that today here. Did you know, for instance, that there are 500 million indigenous peoples and local communities across the world? Many of them don't have easy lives, but we will also hear about their resilience, their commitment, and the work they are doing on questions like climate change, health, preserving biodiversity, and, and their combat for business practices, better business practices. Second, Valerie, these debates are going to be amazing. We'll hear the voices of indigenous women. Uh, yes, indigenous women and girls are still being discriminated against. Their access to land, their access to education, their access to uh, all kinds of facilities that we take for granted is in jeopardy. And they suffer gender-based violence. But once again, they are amazing in their passion and their commitment and in what they are achieving. I am so impressed with them. They're really inspirational stories and strength and courage. Third, and this is also so very important, we have some very amazing people participating in these various panels and debates this morning. For instance, you'll get to meet the wonderful Joan Carling, who is an indigenous rights activist and environmental defender from the Philippines. She has been defending land rights for many, many years. There is Anne Nurgam, a Finnish Sami politician, a member of the Sami Council and current chair of the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous People since since 2019. Nora Pareja Ortiz is a YU indigenous woman from the Ifuana clan in northern Colombia. She's a leader in the indigenous organization Fuerza de Mujeres YU. There's also Georgie Carino who will talk to us about the indigenous navigator, a data collection tool which is so essential for any work that one does on indigenous peoples because no data, no work. Um, and we'll hear about young people as well. There's Hamid Arum Harahap. He's a PhD student from the indigenous tribe Batak Ankola in northern Sumatra. And he, like many others of the young leaders here, is working hard to change things around. There's a debate on indigenous human rights defenders and their struggle for a better life. And we will discover the value of indigenous food systems as well. It's simple, really, Valerie. Indigenous peoples have mastered the art of living on the earth without destroying it. We can learn so much, so much from them. So join me in Studio 3 for a deep dive into the lives and the invaluable work of indigenous peoples and local communities. Back to you, Valerie. Thank you, Shada. That is a really important conversation to be having. That sounds super interesting. Uh, now let's go over to Studio 4, where we have Beatriz Rios, a reporter who covers EU affairs for Spanish and international media. She's got a big topic on her plate, which is climate change. Now, since climate change is far-reaching, it would probably take several editions of EDD to have a complete grasp of it. So, Beatriz, what can we expect from your sessions? Good morning, Dave. Indeed, a wide topic that we're going to be addressing today. We're going to be talking about the need uh, for inclusion when it comes to the fight against climate change. You know that we have to do this together. And that means bringing together all the countries around the world. That's why the European Union is putting the EU Green Deal at the core of its foreign policy agenda, including the developing agenda. You know that the European Green Deal was launched in December 2019 and that the European Commission has managed to put that at the cornerstone of all EU policies. It's not just a policy, it's an approach. And it's very much in line with the 2030 agenda towards which we still are working. And, you know, what we are going to do is to have a wide perspective about all the opportunities, but also all the challenges that the world is facing when it comes to fighting climate change. One of those is obviously the transformation of the economy in trying to make the economy sustainable and trying to 
to ensure that growth includes everybody, but that also protects the environment. That's going to be the first session that we're going to have this morning. We're going to have speakers both from African countries and the European Union to have an incredibly interesting exchange about how we can translate that EU Green Deal into a Green Deal for Africa to support the economy, the green economy in the African continent, and to make sure that that sustainable growth also includes everybody in the equation. And because inclusion is so important, we're going to be talking as well about the need to include social protection, but also uh, pr um, uh, risk uh, uh, assessment of uh, the climate change impact into uh, our policies. We need to make sure that the impact of climate change is eased uh, through social policies, but also that when we, uh, we achieve that green transformation, we ensure that we protect people in doing so. And because one of the impacts of climate change is migration, we're going to be talking about how specifically in the Pacific, because of uh, the high, uh, uh, the, the increase of the, of the sea, uh, of the sea um, uh, high during uh, the climate crisis, has pushed people away from their land. We're going to be talking about this migration and also the concept of refugee, uh, climate refugee, which is something that we have been discussing in Europe for quite some time indeed. And we're also going to be talking about concrete projects because we're going to have a philosophical discussion about all the needs that, all the things that we need to do to ensure that we fight climate change in an inclusive way. But we also want to hear from concrete projects. And here I am very excited. This is something that I care a lot about and I find that it's very interesting. We're going to be talking about decentralized cooperation. If you don't know what that is, make sure that you stay with us in uh, TV Studio 4 because we're going to be talking about the concrete cooperation between two towns, one in North Africa, one in Europe, about what they are doing together to fight climate change. And this is something that is very, very interesting. But we're also going to be talking about biodiversity and how we can make sure that we protect the ecosystems to protect the environment because this is absolutely key. And especially because this is a key element of the EU development days this year. We're going to be talking with young people. We want to hear their ideas, their thoughts, their impressions about how we can make sure that we fight climate change, but also how they can be part of that conversation and those solutions. These sessions that we're going to have over the next few hours are going to be all about inclusion, all about exchange, and all about not only challenges, but especially opportunities and ideas to ensure that we tackle those issues. So very much looking forward to a start the day. Make sure that you tune in on TV Channel 4. Thank you, Beatrice. And lastly, we have Pablo villanueva Hurlbrook uh, in Studio 5. You are a poli policy officer, biodiversity and forests. Please spark our interests on forest and landscape management. Hi, everyone. Here on TV Studio 5, we will focus on forests and landscape management. Forests sustain the livelihoods of nearly 25% of the world's population. They offer cost-effective solutions for carbon sequestration and host most of our planet's terrestrial biodiversity. There has been some progress towards sustainable forest management, balancing environmental, social, cultural, and economic aims. But how do we reduce and reverse deforestation and forest degradation to instead conserve biodiversity, enhance forest carbon stocks, and ensure sustainable socioeconomic development. One element of response, the landscape approach, has been met, met with growing interest as an effective and integrative approach to meet the UN Sustainable Development Goals. It allows us to avoid siloed sector approaches and balance demand and policies for multiple land uses in a given area. Managing landscape sustainably entails environmental, climate and livelihood development considerations and is therefore an effective way to manage sustainably natural resources. But do we all understand it the same way? Are there different types of landscape approaches? What have, we, what have we learned from projects on the ground and what are the keys for its success? Here on TV Studio 5, we will hear from high-level speakers from the Republic of Congo, FAO and the EU on the links between climate and forests, as well as from our young leader Richard Wambois from Kenya. We will then hear from BMZ and GIZ on how they implement this on the ground in Indonesia before traveling to the beautiful but imperiled 
Guiana Shield in South America. We will hear the energizing views from our youth climate ambassadors of the Center for UN Constitutional Research and see how even banks and humanitarian agencies can get involved in the landscape approach with FMO and the Netherlands Red Cross. Finally, 40 participants will play in parallel to an elaborate, serious game that feeds into broader research on the modalities of participation that favor successful landscape management. And we will close the morning with the results from this interesting exercise. Thank you, Pablo. That also sounds super interesting. So we hope that the thematic moderators have convinced you to check out their programming on their respective channels. It's going to be difficult to choose one, but that's all uh, from me and Dave for now. See you back at 1 p.m. Brussels time on this channel for the first special event of the day. Healthy planet, healthy people. Expect a timely conversation among high-level speakers. Yes, I'll be moderating that special <laughs> event, in fact, which is about the pandemic. So be sure to tune in for that. So to all the participants, we wish you a very rich EDD experience wherever you are, and we'll see you after the break.